it's challenging, but you know, the, after you pass it, the feeling of victory, it's worth it. <laughs> well, yeah, there was, I remember there was a time when I got 22 and I feel like I've done so much and I'm, I got a score of 22. There is no way I will improve. Over yeah. about three months, we did a total of 15 live streamed classes that a lot mm -hmm. of people have been following both on YouTube and on Facebook. The links to watch those classes are both in the description of this video. And so I've been gathering questions from other people who need to score 26 on TOEFL speaking. And so I'd like to ask you some questions. Of course. Okay. So I help a lot of pharmacists. And these are people who have a very successful track record of succeeding academically. So when they come to me, they might say something like, I have not passed, I took the TOEFL two or three times or more times and I haven't passed. And they show me their scores while their scores have been increasing, while I see progress, they see that it's not passing. So what advice would you give to somebody who doesn't pass it their first time, who needs to take it multiple times? Well, you, you said that they tried two, three times to begin with, I, that was my sixth or seventh attempt before I passed. Um, my, I work at CVS Pharmacy and I have a boss who, like, who is my pharmacy manager. He passed after 20 attempts. And there, was another, there is another pharmacist who works at Walgreens that I know she passed after 14 attempts. So <laughs> if they try two or three times, that's it's there is no reason to be upset hmm. if they haven't passed it because I honestly would be surprised if they they do pass it from after such a little attempts. Yes. So yes, that that's normal. I would say pay attention to yourself. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to your weak point. Weak points and try to improve them. Be honest with yourself and accept the reality and try to make a plan how to improve it. Because everything I believe that everything happens for a reason. If you got a certain score, then that should be a sign that this is something that needs to be improved. And it's, you're not wasting your time. You're, you're improving yourself. You're working on increasing your knowledge, working on making yourself better. It's like, I think that people should be inspired to, to work on it. Yeah, I remember th that's not, that's how I, when I just, my first, I remember my first time and I really, I was hoping that I will pass. And then I found out that I didn't pass and I was so upset about it. It's, and, but now it's, I realized that it was absolutely normal. That's for the TOEFL, that's a normal process. It's not a re, like, it's not normal exam. It's not something that people meet too often. It's not right. like all other exams. Would you like to talk about your strategy on taking the test, signing up for oh, multiple yeah. tests. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, so yeah, I signed up for probably four tests in a row. Like every Saturday I scheduled a TOEFL test. And I, I learned that from- let me, let me, can I make sure? So when Polina says four in a row, she means on her calendar, she already paid and signed up for four tests in a row, meaning maybe she passed the first time and wasn't going to need to take it the other three times, but she had already signed up, registered, and paid for four classes into the future. Yes, and I learned that from someone who passed the TOEFL. I I told you, and she recommended me that, that that might be a good 
good idea. And then on, on my TOEFL exam, it was one of my first time, like the first or second time I went to take the exam. I met a girl, that was her seventh time she was coming. And that was like also seventh time in a row. Mm. And then we got each other phone numbers and um, just in case. And then later we would text each other and she told me that she passed after seven attempts in a row. And so that made me think that maybe that a, a good, I good idea to try it. And so I did the same thing and S seven attempts in seven consecutive yeah. weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah, it worked for me, but I think that you can only do that if you if you feel you are ready, if you, you've taken it before and your score was 25 on speaking, 23 on you know, writing or something, otherwise it will be a waste of time and money, of course. So that's, I think it's a good idea. About speaking rate, mm -hmm. in our classes, you remember this was something we focused on and this was one of the things that mm -hmm. greatly contributed mm -hmm. I talk to people about speaking rate. I show them why it's important. They agree with it. Intellectually, they agree with it. But then right after that, we will switch to, okay, let's do a, let's practice another speaking question. You know, for example, you have 60 seconds to speak. And then when they start, it's like they forgot about the thing that they themselves agree with to speak faster. Mm -hmm. So I think this is because, you know, people, pharmacists tell me, you know, um, they're, they they prefer to speak professionally, um, elegantly, to make the conversation better for other people by speaking slower. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how can people make that shift in their mind? And how can people practice to improve their speaking rate? Well, I did several things to improve my speaking rate. Well, other than a lot of practice to my... To, like with the TOEFL, actual TOEFL tasks, as you remember last summer, I um, enrolled in acting classes. Yes. <laughs> and they made me like read different verses, different poems and different speaking exercises, tongue twisters. Mm -hmm. And that was very fun. And it's, it was a good way to improve your speaking rate, something that made me kind of distracted from the TOEFL. And, you know, you get bored doing the same speaking. The man agrees. <laughs> yes. Uh, nice. <laughs> that was a fun way to, to improve my, like, my speaking fluency. And the, the tongue twisters really helped. I recommend that like to everyone try that if there is maybe if they have a free time there is there should be like in America community theater and it's not very expensive usually so I would like try it as an experiment to go to audition or something yes do some like speaking practices out of the comfort zone but yes. that's, it shouldn't be instead of your main studying for the TOEFL. It's just when you are, when you get so bored right. <laughs> with the TOEFL studying that yeah. you, you can try that. Reading out loud. I, I used to read out loud about 15, 20 minutes every night before I go to bed. And it's, it's good to try to like follow all the intonations or then try to read as fast as you can. We did 15 live streamed classes over a period of about three months. Uh, those are available on my YouTube channel. I'll link the description in this video and in the Facebook group that is also linked in the description of this video. Mm -hmm. And another question that came from 
people that have been following you on your journey to pass the TOEFL for FDGEC is how did you enrich your vocabulary? They say, I'm really good at learning new words, but I don't apply them to my speaking answers. What advice would you give somebody on that? I will make a screenshot on my phone of the dictionary page or like a phrase that I didn't know or like something I'm, I wanna learn. I will make a screenshot and I will have a separate album with um, what I'm trying to learn. And I also will go over it if I have like five, 10 minutes you put in the consistent practice, you absolutely deserve to pass. You earned it. Thank you.